All right, so I'm doing the maple syrup tutorial now, finally. I will have tabs on screen because I'm not gonna thoroughly explain every single thing because some of it can just be explained by tab. First chord is this A major bar chord. Second chord is right under it. The low E string is muted on this chord. And then the last chord. The E string is muted on this chord as well. So you're going to be rotating between those three chords, playing the first one twice, and then the other two just once. So those three chords are going to be played in rotation all the way up until the 57 second mark. Between each of the chords, you're going to be doing a lot of string muting. Just like that, down, up, down. So at the 57 second mark, it's going to die down and he's going to start doing some picking. Seventh fret on the D. 6th fret on the G, and 5th fret on the B. Instead of playing it like a C shape though, I would be barring with your first finger all the way up until the 5th the fret on that D. Even though you're not playing the 5th fret on the D, I would bar up until that right there, and then place your other fingers down. Give it a nice slowed down strum on those three strings, the D, G, and B. And then right after that, put your pinky down on the 7th fret high E, up strum. So that's what that next part's going to sound like after you give it that up strum on those four strings. You're going to go from the G to the D to the B. Then you're going to give it a down strum and slide in to barring the 6th fret on the D, G, and B. You want to have all your fingers down, lift up and then slide. Keep your first finger held down and just slide it up. So after you slide up from that shape, then I'm just going to place my middle finger in front of my index right here, 7th fret D, and then place my pinky down on the 8th fret high E. And then you're just going to be picking the G, D, and then the high E. going to slide from those into the next shape. Lift your middle finger up from that shape, just sliding from an up strum. So after you do that slide up into the next shape, you're going to start on that high E, go to the G, and then the D. Pick that 12th fret, slide it back down to the 9th fret, and then pick that G string right after. And then all you're going to do at the end of that is strum that last shape with an up strum. So that whole part will sound just like this. to another short little picking part after that, but it's a little bit more simpler. 7th fret D, 6th fret G, 5th fret B. Add your pinky down to the 7th fret high E, and that's the shape. The picking pattern is going to go D, G, D, high E. Just like that. And then grab that B string at the end of that. You're going to go up to the next shape after that, which we've already done this one as well. 7th fret D, 6th fret G. 8th fret, high E, and then grab that B string at the end. You're going to start strumming on that same shape and slide into that last shape that we already did. You're pretty much going through these three shapes twice, but just doing a little bit different on each one. That makes sense. So the second half of that picking part will sound just like this.
So that's what that will sound like at the end of that. You're going into that last shape and strumming it. <laughs> You're gonna be strumming that similar to how we did the three chords with down and up mutes in between each one. And then after this, there's a bass part that comes in. You can hear it. Uh, I just go on that ninth fret and I just play it a few times and slide out of it. I mainly just kind of aim for the high two strings. And then the bass part comes in, which is pretty fun to play. If you have some sort of distortion or overdrive, it would be helpful for this part. It sounds really good. You also want to be palm muting this. So you're going to do fifth fret three times, down to the fourth fret, back up to the fifth fret. You're going to do fourth fret on the A, fifth fret on the E, fourth fret on the A again. And you're going to grab the seventh fret A with your pinky. So 7th fret A, 5th fret A, 4th fret, 5th fret, 5th fret. Then you're going to do another 5th fret, 4th fret, 5th fret on the A. Slide up to that 9th fret on the A. You're going to do 5, 4, 5, 5, and then on that 2nd 5, slide up to the 9th fret. Slide up to the 9th fret, play that twice, play the 8, play the 9 again. So you're going to play that over again, but instead of sliding up to the 9th fret, you're just going to do an octave on this 8th fret. You're going to be playing the 8th fret on the A string, and the 10th fret on the G string. Just those two strings, nothing else. And then you're just going to strum that octave three times. After those three octaves, it's going to go back into the strumming pattern with the three chords that I taught in the intro. At the 2 minutes and 13 seconds mark, Josh is going to be singing We Both Know Why. And after the end of that why, he's going to be playing one of the A chords. Just strum it a few times extra fast before you hit that second A. So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing with this fast strumming technique that he does. And then at the 2 minutes and 22 second mark, it's going to go down to a different chord. He's going to go down from this last chord over here. And I'll typically strum it a few times and kind of slide down to that B. And then I'll come back up to that second chord here, give it a fast strum again, go back up to the A, fast strum that. Go back down to that second chord and do it again, another fast strum on that. So after that, the song's gonna die down again, and you're gonna redo that kind of slow melodic picking stuff that I taught earlier. You're just gonna redo that, and you're just gonna start by going right on that chord, which is. second time around what I do is I played a little bit slower a little bit quieter and easier I'm not picking as hard but yeah you're gonna go right back into that the same way you're gonna end it with that one picking pattern I've obviously already taught that part but make sure on that one chord on the last one over here giving it one of those fast drums when he gets over to it and then after that chord you're gonna go to one more before the solo begins which is just this 
7th fret D, 6th fret G, 5th fret B, 7th fret high E. I just repeatedly strum it down like this. So he'll just slide out of that chord and then there's kind of like an interlude to the solo that begins, which is really, really simple. And then after you get done picking that kind of interlude part, I do two strums. And then the solo begins. I'm gonna go ahead and play through the solo as slowly as I can without messing it up. And I'll have the tabs on screen to follow along. I think it sounds better to hammer on from the 5th to the 7th rather than just picking them individually, so the way I do it sounds like this. sliding into that first 15th fret. I'm pretty sure Josh actually slides into the 15th fret every time he plays this sequence, but um, I kind of just do it on the first one really. You're going to want to slide on that last 14th fret. Make sure you grab the 14th on the high E and the B. Hit those two, slide out of it, and then it's just an open A major down here five times. solo is really the hardest bit of the song. Uh, just practice, go slow. It's the live version of the solo is exactly the same except for the end of it when he goes down to this part. Skip that part, come down, bar the second fret, high E and B, fifth fret, high E and B, seventh fret, high E and B. He's gonna play those twice and then he's gonna do an octave lower of this. Thank <laughs> you. 